Hey guys, coming to you from an undisclosed Texas job site. I'm visiting my friend who's building his custom home. And for the privacy of the clients, I can't show you anything but this wall right here. But I think there's some really interesting building science on this one small wall that's really worth a quick video. So first of all, I wanna to talk to you about the insulation here. This is exterior insulation on the entire outside of the house. And the builder here is using three inch rock wool. Now this bag here has the old Roxol logo. They rebranded at the beginning of this year to rock wool. But what you're seeing here is three inch mineral wool insulation. And this is called comfort board. Now this comes in a variety of sizes. I've used this in four by eight sheets before, but this happens to be a two foot by four foot. That's a good comfortable size for you to handle. And what you see here is they've run it horizontally around the entire outside of the house. Now I love exterior insulation. And Joe Stebrick has a great analogy about this. He says, you know, most American houses, we insulate as if we're stuffing the insulation between our ribs. But on a cold, rainy day like it is here in Austin, would I want insulation stuffed in between the structure of my body? Or would I want to put on a big fleece like I have on today? Much more comfortable to put on a whole blanket of insulation. And that's what this house here is here with this Rockwell comfort board, three inches all the way around the outside of the house. Anecdotally, the builder is conditioning this house during construction. In this summer, he had a three ton air conditioner hooked up to this very large 8,000 square foot custom home. And even on 100 degree days, he was able to maintain below 80 degrees, no problem on this massive house. Only on the days when it got over 110 did he have a hard time maintaining in the 70s on this house, which means that that exterior blanket of insulation is doing a great job of being super, super efficient for this house. Okay, next thing that's interesting on this install, check out this rain screen. You're used to seeing rain screen battens like this vertically and then a horizontal siding attached directly to this. But what we've got here is a grid pattern. Why is that? I can't show you the siding that's going on here, but the siding is basically a vertical siding that's gonna be an open joint rain screen. And to get that vertical siding and to be able to screw that on, the builder has then laced in this horizontal inch and eighth Advantec decking. They've ripped down into these three or four inch rips. Now what's also interesting about this is how he's fastened it. You can see here when he installed the insulation on the outside, this rock wool, he used a cap fastener and a screw just in a few places to hold that down. And then when these battens, the vertical battens got installed, these are basically just tacked on. They're just barely into the uh, sheathing, which is beyond this. And in fact, the sheathing's pretty interesting on this house as well. The builders used a three quarter inch Advantech decking as the sheathing. Now he verified this with the engineer, but the idea is then when he installs these inch and eighth, this has a six inch screw that runs all the way through this batten, through this batten, through the three inch and then into the sheathing. And because the siding is not super heavy, it's not a, 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 it's not a stone siding or anything that's holding on, it's lightweight enough that that screw, as long as it penetrates all the way through that three quarter inch Advantech sheathing, the engineer has verified that's all he needs to do, which means that now you don't need to worry about where are the studs and how do I find a stud through here. The entire wall has three quarter inch. You can screw in anywhere you're good to go. I thought that was really interesting. Now check out the airflow that's going on here. He's got a bug screen back here on the bottom and we've got a nice wide three quarter inch air gap. And then at the very top, it's a little harder to see, but he's got a bug screen wrapped up there. And there'll be a gap between the finished surfaces. He's got this gorgeous white oak ceiling uh, here in the soffit around the front porch area. And then he's got a stone floor here. And the stone floor will be a, at least an inch gap between that and the bottom of this. So there'll be plenty of airflow back there. And then before he installs the siding, he's gonna wrap this around. This is already in the front of the house. This is gonna get wrapped around. This is a UV stable spun polyolefin house wrap, which means that it can stand the UV rays on the gap in the vertical siding. So as this vertical siding gets installed, it's got a small gap between each panel, and that black is all you're gonna see back there. It also means that this Advantech decking that you see that they use as rips is gonna be kept dry. There may be an incidental drop or two on maybe a massive rainstorm, but because of that airflow, everything can dry out back there. Just an incredible install. The builder did a great job. They used string lines as they installed all this. You can see they shimmed it in a few places because you do have to be careful with this rock wool. Uh, it can be compressed. So when you're screwing in and you wanna make sure you string line it, make sure everything's straight. 
And on another side of the house where the side is installed, I sighted down and he said, I dare you to find one spot that's not perfectly dead flat all the way across. And sure enough, very, very nice job. I really appreciate this builder allowing me to take a tour and at least getting some video of this short section. Hopefully you learned something. If you want to know more about Perfect Wall, I've got a series of videos on that and I'll also link to an article by Dr. Joe Stebrick about Perfect Wall. That's the system of exterior insulation blanketed around the entire outside of the house. But the point here is, boy, exterior insulation can make a world of difference. You may not be able to get three inches on your project, but if you're in a cold climate or even a warm climate like me, even a small amount of exterior insulation to bring that dew point out to the outside of your sheathing makes a huge difference in the longevity of your house and condensation and moisture issues. Very, very impressive. And oh, by the way, when you use rock wool on the outside of your house, you can dry through it as well. So this is a perfect exterior insulation to use in all climate zones. Guys, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.